visual recording on your smartphone, you load that into the system, it, the system automatically straps who you are from when you put it in, it takes the date, the location uh, from the, the photo, you're asked to make a suggestion from what you think it is, if you've got no idea you just say I don't know, based on what that suggestion is an email will go to a group of We've got 80 volunteer moderators, which range from a 12-year-old boy to retired, world-renowned university professors, who will look at that image and ID for you. Um, there's a few of the moderators around here. Um, sometimes they'll say, look, you've taken a photo of the flower, when do I do this plant, we need to leave. So there's a discussion back and forth. When the uh, image is finally identified, you'll get an email back telling you what it is. Um, and the data goes to the ACT government and to the Atlas of Living Australia where everyone gets access to it. Sounds fairly simple. Uh, basically, uh, across those platforms, you've now got access to a million and a half re records that weren't previously in the public database. Um, and that's come mainly from uh, existing nature groups who had their own data and 3,000 citizen sciences out there. Now what does that data do? Just some examples. The Minister mentioned how in the first three years of Canberra Nature Map it, it got as many rare plant records as, as what the expert scientists had collected over the previous 110 years, uh, which, which is a good example. Um, moving on, uh, for about a third of the threatened species within the ACT the listings on the nature map have either doubled the known population locations or the total populations of species, um, and some of those quite substantially. It's also become the key plank for detecting early incursions into our region. So that's weeds and pests that we don't want. So um, on, over, on about 40 occasions, Sightings on camera nature map have been the first time that that weed has ever been recorded in the ACT. On over 90 occasions, um, that sighting is the first time a plant's been recorded in a particular reserve. And on over 200 occasions, either the person that's made the, the, the sighting or a team from the ACT government has been able to go out and control that species while it's still only in you know, one or two plants or a few and it's easily controlled rather than waiting until when it's out of control. So it's really effective uh, pest control measure for us. We also, um, this is from one of the sister sites, the Atlas of the Coastal Wilderness. We've been asked people to um, focus on a particular species of interest and people have responded remarkably to those requests. So it's building up data that's particularly needed for management or research purposes. Um, mapping glossy black cockatoos is a call across all those platforms. Um, and yeah, we've, we've got to know a lot more sites and breeding hollows that we didn't uh, previously know based on having thousands of eyes out there. This is, a, I really love this example because it explains how things can just happen when you don't actually plan for them, which has been the history of citizen sites. Um, the top photo up there is of a butterfly, it's called the Small Ant Blue. It was taken by a citizen science, Christine Darwood. I can't say, oh, she is here. Well, well done. Um, now, she took that just over a year ago, and you might notice it's actually laying an egg. At the time, this butterfly, there hadn't been any known breeding sites for about a decade. So you can imagine the excitement of the butterfly people in seeing this. The guy who, Michael, who's at Syro here, he hadn't even seen this butterfly and he spends his life researching butterflies. Um, it actually has a very complex relationship with the coconut ant, which is because it smells like coconut oil when you squash it. The coconut, it basically lives in the, the nests of the coconut ant, which lives in fallen timber. And it has this sort of crash stuff on the top, which is very easily identified. So we asked the citizen science out there on nature map, could they record the sites of the coconut ant. Um, and we got uh, 343 sightings from people out there. We then asked a group of the keen people and we trained them up to identify the butterfly eggs, the caterpillar and the larvae. And we said, can you go and 
check where there's a concentration of those ants for further breeding sites. And we now know that we've got, within five of our reserves, we've got seven breeding sites of this butterfly. And they're the only seven breeding sites known in the whole world for that butterfly. And a year ago, we didn't even know we had it. So it's just amazing what... So thank you, Christine. Um, it also can be uh, directed, so well, our government minister, we were getting flat from uh, some of the residents of Miranda that our prescribed burning was destroying the orchid community. We didn't really have the data to say, no, you're wrong, or yes, you're right. So we said, well, let's work together. And we stratified the fire history by putting a little uh, star picket. We asked people to photograph every orchid within 50 metres of that star picket. And, um, what it resulted in in, in a study that, that came up. Well, generally the orchids are doing quite well in the random bushland, but there were a couple that really didn't like fire, and there's a couple.